Hello and welcome to Fear Into Faith. I am your host, Summer Day, and this is our Miracles, Signs, and Wonders series. Now today we are here with Miss Jamie Gatchell, a beautiful Southern Belle from Clinton, South Carolina. And let me tell you a little bit about her. She is a mom of three and has two bonus children. She is a grandmother of four. She's been married to her fabulous husband, Keith, for 22 years. And something interesting about Miss Jamie is she likes collecting seashells, cooking, and reading. Now, we get to talk to her today about her miracle story where she had her baby healed in the womb. Are you ready for that? Here we go. Miss Jamie Gatchel. Hello, darling. Hey. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm so excited for you to be here. I am too. Now, I got to make a warning right now. Sometimes when I'm around people that have that beautiful Southern accent, it just starts to come out in me and it might just turn into the two of us being Southern. Well, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Well, I am so glad to have you here. And I know that your story of your miracle with what happened with your daughter uh, was in our book actually last season. Yes, so excited to have was. you here. And and have people see the face behind the story and he hear all about what the Lord did. So let's start there. Let's go back and I have you share that story. So I we'll will. start with how far along were you when you were pregnant? I could not have been more than 17 weeks. It was um, back in the day, 32 years ago, when I was pregnant, you, you went for an initial let's just check things yeah. out and hopefully we can tell you if you're going to have a boy or a girl if mm -hmm. the baby's positioned right. Correct. Yeah. And um, so that was the, the ultrasound we were going mm -hmm. for. And um, that day we were going over and um, we went back and um, they had me in the gown. <laughs> And the ultrasound technician was doing her thing, and my husband at the, at the time, David, mm -hmm. my children's father, he was there with me anxiously waiting to see, you know, what the sex of the baby was going to be and everything. Which and is always a really exciting time. I'm yes, a mom of three. I yeah. remember those times vividly. Uh, we were so excited, and we were so young and just crazy. You and it know. was your, your first child? My first yeah. child. Okay, so the excitement was very high. And I'm it was sure. going to be the first child, a grandchild on both sides of the family. So wow. Everything yes. hinged Everyone on was it. highly it's invested. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, and all of a sudden, she said, y'all are going to have to excuse me. I need to go get the doctor. Hmm. I looked at David, and he was like, well, I wonder what's wrong. I said, there's nothing wrong. Hmm. And when you said that, I felt like you could almost feel the atmosphere shift in that there room. There was nothing wrong. <laughs> She's trying to take it this way, and you're like, oh, no. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> and um, so she went. She got the doctor, who, by the way, you know, when you, you're going to an OB office, you know, mm -hmm. and you don't necessarily see your regular doctor okay. at every um, appointment. Yeah. appointment. Yes. And so... Another doctor that I knew, but I had never seen him, mm -hmm. came in and he started looking at the ultrasound and he took the wand and he started mm -hmm. going over my belly and he said, excuse me. So we were just sitting there, you know, what in the world? And um, I was told to get dressed and we went into the doctor's office mm -hmm. and um, he laid this out. And he had a book, and he said, okay, this is what we have. Your baby has a cyst on her brain. There's only been 11 case studies. Wow, in the whole world. That's what he said. 11 at case that studies. Time, 11 wow. case studies. And I faxed MUSC, the Medical University of South Carolina in okay. Charleston, uh -huh. and, um, you know, the prognosis just doesn't look look good. Wow. I suggest that you let me set up a DNC. And I said, no. Wow. So his thing was you needed to terminate the pregnancy. Exactly. Wow. And I said, no, because there's nothing wrong with my baby. My baby is going to be healed. Wow. So you instantly just right into faith. 
I mean, yeah, it's called fear and faith. All, you did not have that moment of like, <gasps> or panic or anything. You just were able to go, nope, No, you're they wrong. weren't going to take the baby <laughs> that I wanted so desperately. Yeah. They were not going to take my baby. Wow. Um, and my husband took this, he, he was like, honey, are you, you sure? Are you sure? And I said, yes, I am. And he said, good, because I'm sure to. Oh! <laughs> I love that. I thought you were going to say that he was like not agreeing or anything. Yeah, no, he was like, I'm sure to. <laughs> love it. Awesome. So, um, and what was the doctor's reaction? The doctor when you said, were like, No, you're wrong. Basically, how far along are you? Hmm. And I said, You have my file. And um, he said, I tell you what, since you're so adamant that you won't. You want, you're not budging. He said, I'll give you a month. You come back for a repeat ultrasound, yeah. and we'll make the decision then. I said, there's no decision to make. I've already made the decision. My baby's going to be fine. Wow. And I so, love this story because I have to say, you know, I, I, I've had three children, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes in our culture women are not taught to advocate for their pregnancy. I feel like, you know, doctors are important, you know, doctors save lives and also they're people. And I didn't feel like in my first pregnancy that I could advocate enough for how I was feeling or stand up for myself enough. And so I feel like this story is gonna not just inspire people with the miracle that we're getting to, but it's gonna inspire women of like, it's okay sometimes to trust that gut instinct, that mama instinct, and to say, well, hold up here. I'm not feeling what you're feeling. And, um, and take a stand for your own, yeah. your own care. That was beautiful. Well, and it's not just with pregnancy issues. Yeah. Women, as we grow older, mm. we really, you become seen less as a oh. person. You become more invisible as a person, I think, sometimes. Mm. And you need to learn to advocate for yourself. Amen. Your Amen. own health care because you know your body. Yeah that God's given you. Amen. But I don't mean to, to get off track. No, that's good stuff too. Um, I'm like, wow, <laughs> yeah. So this is not just a miracle story, but also just about standing up and having the courage. Um, Cause I've talked to women on the other side that they felt the prompting of something with their own body mm -hmm. and they didn't listen to that prompting and they did not have results, not just with a pregnancy, but with other things. So I right. love that your story is also encouraging of you've got to listen to that. You've got to you, listen to that instinct. You've got to listen to God, Holy Spirit when you're feeling something. Okay. So the doctor's going to give you a month. And, and I told him, okay, well, you're not going to see anything on her brain but brain cells. <laughs> I love your We're, confidence. You know, so we get in the car, and I'm, I'm not going to lie. I did have a moment of, I can't believe this. Oh, yeah. And my husband and I just, we held hands. Mm -hmm. And he cried a little bit. Mm. And I cried a little bit. Mm. And um, he said, oh, Lord, you know, I told Mama we'd go by her house. Oh, wow. And I said, yeah, well, we need to. Um, and so we went by. We told her. Yeah. And obviously the grandparents yeah. were upset. Yeah. But I said. Well, hold on, hold on. We actually have to take a commercial okay. break. So I think that's a great place to stop. It is. With, it and is. then I said, so if you want to hear what <laughs> Jamie said next to her mom, stay tuned. We'll be right back after this commercial. Well, we're back with Miss Jamie Gatchel, and we're on our, on, on our seats on the edge, pins and needles, waiting to hear what did she say to her mother-in-law when she found out the news that something was wrong with her baby. What happened then? Well, Miss Emma got very upset along with... Papa Ray. Yeah, I can and, imagine. Um, First grandbaby. Yeah, and that was kind of, that was really hard telling them, but you know, I said, Miss Emma, call the ladies in your circle group and call Dean Dean, you know, Russell Dean, the yeah. pastor at First Baptist, and let's just get everybody over there praying. Yeah. And um, she said, I'll do that, I'll do that. And um, so then I told David, I said, we well, have to go to my mom's. Mm. And my mama said, when I told my mama, she said, well, honey, everything's going to be all right. You don't have to worry. She said, I'm going to call um, Furman and Anna May. That was my pastor and his mm -hmm. wife. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I'll call, I'll, you know, she na- went down the whole list of the old saintly prayer warriors yeah. that she was going to get on the phone and call. And so she did. So this level of like in, in amazing faith that you have, did it come from your mom? It sounds like My she, mom and my granny, yeah. Wow, I love it. So she didn't mess around either, didn't start shedding tears, just went, it's going to be all right. We're just going to get yeah, on the phone we and, and get some prayer up in here. We go <laughs> we go to pieces afterwards, but yeah. during the crisis, we're mm. there. You know? I love it. And so um, 30 days to 30 wait. 30 days, yeah. And 30 days. How many different pe- With sets of people of the, were praying? Oh, my gosh. I think everybody in Clunan was praying. <laughs> the whole town coming together. I think everybody was praying. Wow. I mean, I, you know? Yeah. It was um, because we had First Baptist and First Pentecostal. Yeah. And they were all praying. Oh, I love it. And um, that during that 30 days, though, the enemy mm. comes. And he says, what makes you think that you're special? Wow. What makes you think that God's going to heal your baby? But I'm so glad that I was taught in the name of Jesus, you have to leave. Amen. Yeah. And um, because, you know, you could, you could let that get into your head if, yeah. If you don't. There is an enemy of this world. Leave. He's here to steal, kill, kill and, and destroy. destroy. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to destroy your faith in that moment for yes, sure. Yes, he did. But um, the, the day before we were to go have that ultrasound. Okay, so now we're at, it's been 29 days, about to hit that 30-day mm-hmm. mark and go in and, okay. I was at work and um, I went out a different way Mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. Normally I'd go out the front entrance, but I went out the side entrance and Mm -hmm. I was singing, living by faith at the top of my voice, you know, Mm -hmm. in my car because the windows were rolled up. (laughs) (laughs) Because if they were rolled down, then you're not going to see. Okay. I may not (laughs) see. Well, I probably would have. (laughs) Anyway, you um, probably would. We get to that. I get to the um, stop sign there. And all of a sudden, I had the strangest sensation. Hmm. It felt like God's hand went inside my womb. Wow. It did. I felt the Holy Spirit just surround me. I felt like Moses in the clouds, wow. you know? Wow, yeah. It, and um, I just knew then I was healed. The baby was healed. Everything's going to be fine for sure. I got home. I could not wait to call my mama. I said, Mama, you are not going to believe this. (laughs) I said, I think, I believe God put his hand in my belly. I believe he touched my baby. Wow. And I know I'm healed. The baby's healed. Everything's going to be fine. She's going to be fine. So the next day, we left for our appointment. Yeah. Yeah. I told David, I said, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. And he said, well, it has to be. <laughs> She's my daughter. Oh, and, I love um, it. I so said, I, at the appointment the month before, had you found out it was a yeah, girl? Yeah, they, oh. they told us it was a little girl. Yeah. So and I was so excited, thinking about all the pink stuff. Wow. And the, you know, that mm-hmm. was back in the early, that was 1991 when she was, she was born on April 18th, 1991. Mm-hmm. And I, I was thinking about all the little things I yeah, could do. You yeah. know, the styles were so crazy back then. <laughs> okay, so now you're on the way there. We're and David's the like, down. on board. It's going to be great because she's be great. my daughter. I love yeah. that. And we were ushered into the ultrasound room. Now, could you feel tension in there? Joan was, the lady was very nervous. Yeah. The I lady bet. was nervous. Mm-hmm. And um, I wasn't. I walked in. Well, I, I may have had a little nerves, but, you know, that's only, that's only natural. I'm yeah. human. Yeah. But I walked in there like I own that doctor's office. <laughs> and Toss, um, toss with the hair. Yeah, man. I walked in there. <laughs> I said, hey, hey, hey. And um, we went back there. I got the gown on. She starts doing it. And she does it around there again. And she says, I've got to go get the doctor. 
Hmm. So she runs out this time. Wow. I looked at David. I said, she didn't find that cyst. That's why she ran out. <laughs> I just and got chilled. <laughs> and he, he started laughing. He started laughing. And uh, then she came in with the doctor yeah. who had recommended the DNC. Wow. And he couldn't find it. And he said maybe the surrounding brain tissue absorbed the cyst. And I said, maybe... <laughs> God healed my baby. Wow. <laughs> and I looked around and the whole room was filled with nurses. Wow. A couple of them were pregnant too. Wow. And doctors and they were crying and just, and I was like, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And, um, you know, we were crying. We yeah. were just happy. Yeah. And, and I said, oh, I told y'all my baby was going to be okay. <laughs> so I just imagine that these doctors and nurses probably had already seen your scans and probably had already... Everybody, it was the talk of the office, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because it was something that none of them had seen. Mm -hmm. There were 11 case studies. Wow. So and, amazing. Yeah. I love that... Um, you know, there's a lot of miracles and signs and wonders that happen, and we don't always have that, like, that documented proof. We don't always have those scans before and after. Um, only 11 cases in the whole world at, at that, that time. time. That's amazing. At that time. I mean, I really mm -hmm. see this of these doctors being in disbelief. Did any of those doctors or nurses come up and say anything to you? Oh, yeah. The nurses were like, we've been praying for you, honey. And, I mean, they were pregnant, too. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then um, one of the older doctors said, well, you, you can never count God out. And I said, that's right. That's right. He's on time. Oh, and, so amazing. And um, the doctor that, you know, was disbelieving or whatever, he, by the time, even had tears in his eyes. Oh. And so we were just... We were thrilled. We didn't even wait till we got home. We called both sets of grandparents. <laughs> yeah, my, mo my mama <laughs> was speaking in tongues. I know she was dancing too. <laughs> wow, I love that, I love that, I love that. We're gonna take another break really quick, so hold that thought. And then when we come back, we're gonna find out how did this build her faith after her baby was healed. We'll be right back. All right, well we are back with Miss Jamie Gatchel and we left you hanging with how did all of the grandparents react when her baby got healed in the womb? So you have got to tell us what were, happened when you called them. They were beyond excited. Um, I think you were saying mom was my mom dancing, started praying in tongues, all the things. Talking in tongues. I picture and her with a tambourine. I know she was dancing. <laughs> no, she had no rhythm. No. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, but, uh, and then Miss Emma and Ray, we could hear them. They were just beyond they were beyond excited, everybody. I love, I love it. And the next Sunday when I went to church with my mama, yeah. Preacher Intrican said, Jamie, I think you have something you need to testify Ooh, about. Baby. Okay, so, so at church they brought you up for Yeah. Her? Well, I didn't have to I could just stand yeah, up where okay. I was because I was really, you know. Um, and I stood up and I said I told everybody how I thanked God for what he did for my baby and yeah. That without his divine intervention, you know, we don't know what we would have done. Yeah, yeah. That you have to really put everything that you have, you have to put God first. So good. And you good. have to give it to God. So good. And what happened uh, in the congregation? How did people respond? Oh, people were, they were clapping and just praising God and everybody was happy. Okay, so now how old is your daughter? Her name is Blair, right? Yes. How old is she now? Blair is 32 years old, and she's a mom herself. Oh! She has an 8-year-old son named Kale. Oh, I love it. Uh, this is so great. What changed in your life? So after this miracle happened, what changed for you? Obviously, I had my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that changes a lot, having and a baby. everything, <laughs> everything that... Um, Everything that I had been taught was so, growing up was just so cemented with that proof mm -hmm. that God does heal. 
God is not going to change. Yeah. He's the same God yesterday, today, and he'll be the same God tomorrow. Wow. And, um, you know, he is a healer. Mm-hmm. He's our provider. Mm-hmm. He's our everything. Yeah. And yeah. Um, that really that really came to the forefront for yeah. me then. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the day she was born. So already when it's the first child for anyone, that just seems, seems to be a pretty big deal when yeah. it's the day you become a mother. And then it's the first grandchild on both sides. Yes. And then this happens where first there's the scare of the you know, cyst on her brain. And then she's healed. At, she would have been you were about halfway through your pregnancy. And I'm just imagining the buildup to this child being born must have been very, very tremendous. It was big. It was yeah. big. And uh, so, mom, tell us a little bit about that day. That day, it was um, April. She was born on April 18th, and we went to the hospital, of course, on the 17th. And I mean, there was a lady, a, well, a younger girl beside me. You know, they take you in and check you out and everything, and mm-hmm. then, and she was screaming, and I said, David, David make her stop or do something. And he... Why, why was she screaming? Because she was in labor. Oh! And <laughs> I was thinking she was and a nurse. I wasn't. And oh, so, so the lady next to you I did the I did the curtain back and I said, honey, my granny always told me the more you scream, the more it hurts. It don't do any good, so give us all a break. <laughs> <laughs> and David said... You're going to get us in trouble. Wow. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not. But she stopped. Amen. And, um, anyway, um, then they, they took me back to, I had the birthing suite, man. Ooh, nice. And um, they took us back, and they found out I couldn't deliver Blair naturally because she was 8 pounds, 11 and a half ounces, and I had to have an emergency <laughs> C-section. So, I don't know, maybe if 8, 11 was big back then, that's not well, so I, big I, now. I was a lot smaller back then. Okay. Okay. I was like, my biggest was 9, too. Didn't have to do yeah. that. Yeah. Well, um, and my mama and Miss Emma were both at the door saying, oh, come on, Jamie, you can do it. You can do it. And I said, David, please get the parents out. From <laughs> <laughs> please, honey. And he did. He did. He was a good coach. So then you ended up having a C-section? I had a C-section. Did you have any moments of, of doubt or fear or worry from the day she was healed and kind of till then? No. 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 The enemy never came at you again. You just... Well, he may have, but I got rid of it. <laughs> you know. So then you end up going in for the C-section? Mm-hmm. And then tell me about when she was born. When she was born, she was perfect. She looked exactly like I had nothing to do with her birth or her genetics. <laughs> she looked exactly like her father. Not sure what you're trying to say about you with that comment. He was but. very handsome. Okay. And, um, and, you know, I didn't get to hold her because they whisked me away. And then, I mean, well... In, they just held her down so yeah. I could see her. And I said, oh, my gosh, she looks just like you, David. So tell me about the moment when you were able to hold her. Well, I had to wait on Reverend Russell Dean, who, was, who had just flown in from Seoul, Korea. He got to hold my baby before I got to well, hold her. Well, why did you have to wait for him? Because he came in and he said, can I hold the baby? And the nurse handed him my baby before so, I got to hold you had a You had him fly in from Seoul, Korea? No, he flew in. He had just landed, and he came straight to the hospital when he... For you? Her, for, yeah, for Blair. And he held well, her... Yeah, hold on. I never had anyone come all the way from another country well, when he, I was having he a baby. Was, he had been <laughs> on a mission trip. And was coming back home. Oh, wow. And he flew in. He came flew straight came to the straight. hospital. Because I'm sure there was still a lot of, like, buy-in with this. I'm sure people at the congregation, yeah. everybody was still waiting. I'm sure there were disbelievers. I'm sure there were people thinking maybe she'd still be born and have an issue. I, I feel like there was a lot of tension build up. So I could see why he would race to the well, hospital to be there. He held her. We have a picture of him. And he's just talking to her. And she looks like she knows everything he's saying to her. <laughs> And then they handed her to Aww. me, and there's a picture of me going, oh, you know, like this. And David's there, and he's holding my hand. You know, he's kind of holding me right there, and yeah. he's looking in. And we had the Nancy Thurman suite 
at um, Self Regional Hospital, Strom Thurmond. I've never been there, but our, it sounds fabulous. Was our senior <laughs> senator up in Washington at, yeah. in everything. So we got the the room that she had had all of her babies in. Wow. So. You probably needed that because I'm imagining you had a lot of people we come visit you. We had a lot of, yeah, we Tell did. Tell us who came, who came. Oh, everybody. <laughs> I'm sure not the whole town of Clinton. No, not the whole <laughs> town, but every, all of our, our friends, our relatives, you know, everybody came to see. They had no cap because sometimes hospitals are only letting, you no, know, a couple no, people come fine. in. It was no, wide no, open it's, door. It's, come on in, come whole on town. In. Come on in. What besides you holding her? What was the other big memory of you know maybe the grandparents holding her, husband holding her? Well, David kind of fainted <laughs> during the C-section, <laughs> if I remember correctly. No, he, let's just decide. He fainted because he was so overwhelmed no, he with stand joy. The of blood. <laughs> oh my he god! Said, so crazy. It looks like aliens. So funny. <laughs> that movie. Well, but, thank you for sharing this. I just feel like what a journey from the 17 weeks until she was born. What a journey of faith the last 32 years. Uh, I'm so grateful that God aligned our paths, that you knew we were looking for miracle stories and that you, you submitted your story to be one of them because um, I just know this is going to build a lot of people's faith. So I'm so grateful for you being here. You're so much fun Thank to you. hang out with and talk to. <laughs> and I know that Blair is here yes. and Blair is in our audience. So I want to get Blair up here because everyone should see this 32-year-old gorgeous little thing you got here. <laughs> so this is her. Oh. This is the 32-year-old all this grown is up Blair. miracle. I love it. I love it. So happy to have you guys both here. And I just wanted to say to all of you listening that God is a God of miracles for today. There are so many incredible miracle signs and wonder stories that we have heard. God is not just the God of old. He's not just the God in the Bible. He is the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. Right. And he is alive and he is active today. So I want to pray over you and bless you to have the measure of faith that Jamie had. That when you are in that moment where the enemy's coming after you or there's a diagnosis, whatever it is, I pray for that super natural faith to be upon you today in Jesus' name that you will experience your own miracles, signs, and wonders. We'll see you next time. God bless.